True. We shall. You wore the jacket. I'm I did. I'm proud of you, I man. Did. You really, yeah. <laughs> well, you, 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 you know, you're thinking about a, you know, possible uh, Throwback Thursday theme. So, yes. and that's, that's what we're gonna, that's what we're gonna go with here today. We're going with it. Throwback Thursday slash new Peniter pens that are coming out. They it's a mesh. weird mix. <laughs> I don't like, know how like it's gonna work. Peanut butter and banana. So let's uh, let's talk about your jacket, Drew, because there's a Why not? there's a lot happening. There's a lot going on here. Right next to me here. Well, it's mostly just things that I really like or really liked when I was in high school. Okay. You know, mainly '80s uh, rock bands. Yeah. But you know, you've got some Ninja Turtles, some Goonies. Of course. Uh, this is a uh, Iceman and Sliders symbol from Top Gun, and over wow. here we've got Maverick and Goose. Nice. So uh, that was kind of like what was on the sides of their helmet, but okay. obviously, you know, I've uh, I've seen most of these guys live, but obviously you're... way past their prime, but. Um, this is epic. This is an epic jacket, Drew. Yeah. This is not disappointing. Ghostbusters, yeah, Ghostbusters 1 over that. here, Ghostbusters 2 over here. I wasn't that, the, these guys are less 80s, more Metallica, more like, yeah, that's the, kind of just like the, the rock the section. Jeff yeah. Leppard. You guys, is that a Ren and Stimpy down yeah. there? Yeah, Ren and Stimpy's Dude, hanging out down there. <laughs> he, they don't really belong there, but... That's like more 90s, I know, maybe. I just I just I wanted them there. Arm real quick too. Yeah, you got Bon Jovi, your Skid Row. Motley Crue and wow. Spinal Tap. Wow. Spinal Tap being the only fake band on here, but there aren't Still enough. Still, there aren't enough fake bands iconic. out there. Turn Absolutely. Turn 1984. You're turning it up to 11 ever. with this jacket, Drew. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yes. That's that's pretty great. Yeah, I haven't worn this in a while. This part is like permanently folded over because, <laughs> because I, it just... I haven't been I haven't stored it in the best of conditions. But well, you know, it is what it is. It's got a lot of personality. Like, you need this like on display yeah. in the what, foyer what, of your home. What do you have here? Uh, this is this not is this my, is not in your normal rotation. No, I went back a little further even than high school. This is my middle school track and field shirt, uh, and uh, it's a little schmutzy. I got some. I've done some home projects in this thing, but uh, yeah, I was uh, I was 215 pounds. In middle school, so running track, running tra well, I did shot put and discus. Okay, that makes more sense. So I was like, let me hurl a heavy metal object. Nice. Uh, and that was suited well for a 215 pound eighth grader, uh, and it was not muscle mainly. It was just it was just mass. I was in elementary mass. school with this guy, and he towered above everyone. This is yeah. this was. Uh, I grew quick. Yeah. You 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 were a little. Uh, oh, I was a shrimpy you were a late, dude. Late bloomer. Oh yeah, my 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 learner's permit said I was five four. Wow, really? So yeah, I was yeah. That's crazy. Absolutely. I think I broke six feet in seventh grade. Good God. Maybe eighth grade. But yeah, so I, I shot up, but you're like almost the same height as me. Yeah, well, it, I look but, taller because I'm emaciated. No, I'm just kidding. You're, no, you're, you're, you're slender. <laughs> slender it. frame. Slender. Um, but to, to continue with the throwback thing, I did bring some pictures oh. as well. Oh. Um, I couldn't find any from middle school because Probably for uh, the best. to match the shirt. Yeah, the, no one wants to see my what middle school anyone looks like in middle school. Terrible. I mean, we all are. I had a bowl cut. Like long hair, I was a total poser, like skater, poser, whatever you want to call it. I think mine was just like fluffy and kind of spiked. It was bad. It was yeah, it was, it was bad. Yeah, that's was, when we that's when you and I were like really hanging out a lot. Yeah, I remember we had like English class together and we were kind of that was Brian's around all the big time. black sweatshirt phase. Oh heck yeah! Yeah, I never showered. It was just, it was <laughs> terrible. Like not looking forward to my son entering that phase of life because like, we all I do it. I remember how I smelled back then. It was it was not good. Like, it just was not good. And I had no awareness of it, too. You really I was like, I wonder why I have dandruff and acne, because I showered, like, once a week, and I just didn't make the connection. This is middle school boys. That's oh, what we do. Yeah? Anyway, I found some from high school, though, and I thought that would be kind oh. of a treat uh, just to oh. share with you all, since we're on the throwback theme, and then we'll move on and talk Sometimes about Sometimes when I pens. smell too much, my face itches. So this is me and my friend Matt from back in the day. This was in ninth grade, so I would lost most of my weight, uh, but I still had a haircut situation to figure out. And uh, my glasses weren't as big and awkward as the ones I had in middle school. They were these were these were better, but still, this is Brian with glasses, nice. which was most of me growing up. Um, and then, you know, I uh, I got into the junior ROTC, started to work out a little bit, and where I get some of my discipline and, you know, my uh, <laughs> I don't know I don't know what that is, but um, let's see here. What else have I got? Um, so I, I mentioned before that I played the contrabass clarinet. This is me in a white tuxedo with tails playing the contrabass clarinet, and it's like a six foot tall instrument. So See, I have to sit on a why stool. Why didn't you wear that today? Towering about. I don't. I don't fit into that thing anymore. <laughs> I really don't. Because I lost a bunch of weight. I was like 170 back then, and now I'm like two. You saved it for Joseph though, so he can wear it and no, impress all the ladies. I don't have school. it anymore. Oh, okay. It was not in the best of shape. <laughs> I think that actually might have been my show choir tuxedo, which I'm going to save that because we're going to have Adam on in a couple weeks. And Adam and I have some show choir pictures. That's true. And madrigal pictures. Anyway, we'll get to that. Um, and then I have a picture. So I, 
we were in, in high school in like the late 90s, early 2000s. And uh, bleaching your hair was like all the rage. Yes, so I was. definitely did plenty of that. Or never cutting it like I did. That too. Yeah, that's right. You had yeah. long hair. Yeah. So this is me and my sister from back in the day. Um, and then, let's see here. I got this other one, me and my friend Devin. So I would sport the like just rolled off the beach kind of look. Of course. Didn't have like the puka shell necklace. Or I did. Didn't quite. You did? I had, like, right, two, I had did. like I had like two necklaces. Nice. Did one you of them had like. Any the, of those? No, God, no. Oh, one man. of them had like the, the. It was like the whole Japanese symbol thing was cool back then. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it was like, oh, this is the. 1984, a year of the rat. <laughs> That's Nin right. Japanese symbols are awesome. Yes. I don't even know what they say. They're just right. cool. And then, and then to wrap it up, I have this picture. This is me in 10th grade. This is when I bleached it, let it grow out a bit, little bit, and had the bleach tips. Very much like a boy band kind of look. Uh, I went through that phase. Uh, you know, every so often. So. Nice. Thought Definitely you... getting in sync Backstreet Boys vibes. Oh yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. This, I mean, that was like the coolest thing back then. You had Britney Spears and all that stuff going on. So. Um, anyway, that dates us a little bit, but yeah, I was wearing uh, pro wrestling t-shirts with unbuttoned Hawaiian shirts over them, so I was super cool. <laughs> yes, you see why Drew and I didn't hang out a lot back then. I'm just kidding, Drew. No, I'm you kidding. did. No, no, that's I wouldn't <laughs> hang out with me in high school. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, good. You're a good sport, Drew. I'm really, <laughs> really glad you wore the jacket. I like the you're jacket. You're gonna get love on the jacket. You're gonna get a lot of love I on the jacket. I, no, I love the jacket. I just don't wear it. It's actually a little baggy because you know, you know, uh, form fitting was not a thing in '99. So. Oh no, definitely not. Yeah. Well, also, there's just so much awesomeness happening. You need a lot of real estate. That's true. To make it happen. I like That's that. That's what's going on. I like that. Um, speaking of awesomeness going on, let's talk about awesomeness. We have these pens for like 24 hours, basically, and it just so happens we have them right now. So I am super excited about these pens. Um, yeah, I've so got things to say. Let's say them then. So I I am going to be talking about them a little bit in Q and A. That's right. going to be published tomorrow. And if you haven't already seen it, we've got a great interview with Dante Del Vecchio of Peniter, which the pens we're going to be talking about. Good Check plug. it out. Good plug. The guy's brain is just fun to listen to. Before we get into it, though, your mug, I'm just realizing, that's a King's Dominion mug. It is. This is like... I didn't notice until right now. How yeah. old is this that mug? This is the Stein. It's not okay. a Stein. It's a weird <laughs> looking a, mug. There's a debate. Steins have lids, right? No, this is a Stein. All right. Either way, it's a King's Dominion mug, which is a local theme right. park. I'm, I'm. To me, this looks like early 90s, late 80s. Because you've got this but weird... It, is it styled to look like it's from like late 80s, early 90s? I don't know. There was. There's no style to this. There's a weird pink car with some palm trees... And then I mean, it this looks like weird an rainbow Mustang, thing, sort of. Yeah, it's a, it's like a rainbow, but it's black, pink, green, and yellow, and it's just ugly. But I love it because it it's ugly. Look great. No, it doesn't. But that's 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 the appeal. Yeah. Yeah. It's right. a pretty okay. horrendous mug. How's it perform though, as a coffee vessel? As as a as a liquid holding vessel. Yes. It is. Is it sufficient? This is perfect. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. I don't know about perfect because you know it's not one of these. Brian has almost knocked that over many times. I know. That's because, and every time he does, he's like, ah, Contigo didn't leak. Funny story, and then we'll move on to the pens. So when my uh, when when I was a youngster, a young a young buck, uh, my parents would bring me. I had like a little uh, part time preschool thing. My parents worked ran a business out of the house. It was crazy. So I went to a little preschool thing when I was like four or five years old. My dad would drive me there, and uh, he would have an open coffee mug every day in the car, and he would wear white pants. You see where I'm going with this? No idea. Um, so I, I tend to gesticulate a lot when I talk, which means you, you talk with your hands. I get that from my mother. And, uh, you know, every single morning, practically, I would knock my dad's coffee mug and spill <laughs> coffee on his white pants. Now, as a four or five year old, is it really my fault that that happened? Or is it my dad, the fact that he would both wear white pants and wear, have an open well, coffee one mug? One could say he was asking for it. So I don't know that Contigo was around back then, but certainly Thermos was. And like, there were options for, you know, See, back, travel coffee containers. Back, back then, the travel coffee container was an open top mug with that thin top that flared out massively on the bottom. You remember those things? Yeah, I do remember those, those things. Those were, that was the travel mug. It was a ceramic mug with just like a really wow. big butt on it. I'm just glad that we are where we are. Yes, we are. You know, because technology. <clears throat> Peniter. Let's talk about Peniter. This is the La Grande Beleza. Yes. Belezia. The Grand Beauty. Big Beauty. I don't know whatever you want Big to call beauty. it. Big um, <laughs> Beauty. So we've got slightly less appealing. So we've got kind of like the uh, kind of more traditional resin models <laughs> here and right. here. There. And you know that's the, the, that's the crazy limited, looking limited one. edition. So this is their regular line. Um, this is the gemstone collection, as they're calling right. it, because it looks like gemstones. Yeah. And it actually has like marble dust 
in the pens. And so it's heavier than just your regular resin and it feels sturdier, you know, if you kind of knock it on the table, like it feels a little right. more sturdy than just a regular plastic right. pen. Right, when you look at it, you see a resin pen and you are surprised when you pick it up because the weight is different. You it do is. feel it. It's not heavy, but I'd say it's a little bit more balanced. Yeah. And we have—I don't have like a, the scale or anything on me here. I don't know exactly how heavy they are yet. We'll do full dimensions and everything. It's got a really fun magnetic closure that, um, if you kind of let it guide in on its own, you see a little bit of a, a twist happening. Yeah. Because it's like a, it's spir like a spiraled magnet. Yeah, it's like a of, double polarity magnet or something right. like that. So it's like when you twist it, it <clears throat> unlocks the magnet right. basically. But this nib. The nib is what we got to talk that. about, and that's what really what we're going to focus on for today for the writing session portion of the of the right now, because it is called right now. It's not called look now, it's called right now, so. Um. This blew my mind when I saw it. Not only is it, it really beautiful, did. but um, all of the nib sizes have this style of nib, mm -hmm. and they're all going to uh, bend a little. They're all gonna be slightly flexible. Even the broad and the uh, stub, right? Yeah. So yeah. every, every I, one I of these. I call them more like soft, because the word flexible, right. people think like, it no, should just like no. It's just open it's, up. it's going to give you a little bit of a balance. It's it's not a flex nib, but um, it is intended to give you a nice bouncy feel when you're writing. Which you know, over if you over long time periods, it's going to just be more comfortable for your hand, and it's just going to be more fun to write with altogether. So I got I got this one inked up, and I figured I could ink another one up, and we could just both kind of write with it and just kind of mess around. Um, so I have black swan Australian roses in that because that's a great. Uh, ink for kind of oh, and it's even uh, if, if there's even a magnet on the, uh, on the back is. end. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. I'm gonna use the blue one personally. So you can you can get some line variation out of this thing, but it's more about the fact that it feels just really smooth and it's got a lot of spring to it. Can you write just a little slower so we can see the? Yeah, Drew, calm it down. I'm writing sideways, so it's Thank all you. jacked up. <laughs> <clears throat> and I just think the little blue one. I think this is the same nib size. I think all these all these samples are medium, I believe. Um, but but you know. this is a beautiful looking nib, and it's one of those rare times where it performs just as well as it looks. And when we first started carrying Paniter, I knew Dante Del Vecchio was behind the creation yeah. of those pens. So this and is like very light pressure here, and then if I want to add some pressure, so I can flex it out a little bit. And then I don't know, Andy, if you can get it from the side, like you can see the nib kind of bending a little bit. No, yep, maybe. A little yeah. Bit. Mm -hmm. You can see it kind of bending, but it more just kind of bends. It's not that the tines themselves are like flexing out like crazy. It's oh. more that there's a lot of spring to it. You see how much that's moving there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's what's happening. So you're gonna get some line variation, like if I go thin to thick. But the point of it is not to like let me push as hard as I can on right. this thing and try and stretch it out. Because then what you're going to end up doing is you're going to end up bending the nib away from the feed and you're going to cause flow issues. So it's you can get some line variation, but it's more that it just adds a little a little bit of expressiveness. Right. You're saying it well. It's not writing. it's not the opening of the tines that's that's flexing. It's the just the overall movement of the entire nib itself that's mm -hmm. bouncing. Yeah, um, sure. But these pens and just the overall design with the nib and everything, like this is what Dante is famous for. This is the innovation that he's always brought to the pens he's designed and I'm super excited about these. I think that finally he's really hitting a stride and he's mm -hmm. going to be starting to bring some really fun stuff to market with yeah, Penider. For sure. Do we want to talk about this crazy guy? Let's talk about the crazy guy while we have it, you know, because we're not gonna we're gonna have these in a couple of weeks, I think. But these this are the samples. This is one of a kind. I have never seen anything like this. Have you? I have not. I've this seen pens that have like, um, you know, maybe a resin uh, overlay mm -hmm. or like a steel overlay with like a clear interior barrel right. and cap, but nothing yeah. that's one hundred percent. I guess what's the word for this? Like, it's totally. It's got holes. Yeah, it's got I mean, holes. It's like. All the way through. You can take and stick objects <laughs> through your pen if you so desire. Um, so these are legit holes. I don't know how they, I don't know how he does it. It's a proprietary process. We kind of asked Dante, and he's like, "I'm not telling you that." And it's it's it's, it's smooth too, which is interesting because I saw a picture I mean, of this. It's got a texture to it, but it's not catching my hand. It's right. not like I can't. I'm you know you know rubbing your finger across it. It's not like uh, 
it's sand, it's it's polished to the point where it's not uh, catching or sharp or anything. Well, and like this that. is the prototype too. Dante says that the final one will be even a little more polished and well, kind of cleaned I'm, up looking. I'm happy with this. I really yeah, am. I think yeah, it looks so, beautiful. Yeah, it's a pretty interesting pen. It's not going to be for everybody. It's pretty polarizing um, in terms of whether people like it or not, but it's certainly unique. And uh, it's definitely kind of a collector piece. Is so that they're gonna the same nib as those ones. Same nib. Yep. Yep. Same nib. It's called the quill nib. That's right. what they call it. And obviously Peniter with the quill clip as well, which is I like spring that loaded. It looks really it's cool. It's a very nice clip. It does. And it does it's, doesn't have anything. Um, it doesn't have anything on the bottom here, so it doesn't have a catch. A lot of pens have, mm -hmm. you know, a ball or a notch or a wheel sometimes. This one doesn't. It, uh, pens like this are designed to pull out of your clothing with ease and won't catch anything. No, won't catch any seams or threads or anything like that. Okay. Andy's giving us a signal to wrap it up here. Who? Uh, Andy, right over here. She's just giving us a signal. Oh my God. Clearly, Drew's paying attention. Stop. But anyway. Hey! <laughs> This has been a treat, Drew. Thank you for wearing the jacket. It really seriously means a lot. It's a lot of fun. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this Throwback Thursday edition of Right Now. And uh, right on.